Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Motime Media, and today we've got another installment of This Week in EDM where you go over songs that came out this week in EDM, 34 songs that I wanted to talk about, uh, ranging from bad to standout this week. As always, there is a Spotify link down below where you can find all the songs in easy access format, and I'm trying out something new with uh, shorts um, of kind of playing the top 10 songs in a short, so check that out if you want to hear a snippet from the top 10 songs from this week. Um, but other than that, let's hop into it with the bad category. Remember, this is just my opinion. Uh, uh, I, yeah, don't take it as gospel truth, my opinion. Uh, we've got Slushy and Spirit Link with Worst Night of My Life. Uh, just another Slushy track that I didn't find at all really appealing. Uh, the lyricism and vocal delivery felt crass, and the production side, um, it's just not that unique or catchy for me overall, and so I wasn't a huge fan. Then we got Odd Kid Out and LED with Feel again. Uh, yeah, it feels like there's two songs fighting for one track here. The drops are like this kind of meaty, distorted dubstep wails, while these off drops are these like nicer melodies and bright vocals, and a bit too jarring to go from one to another and paired with such a short uh, song length. Um, just didn't really care for this one. Then we got Murata with Blood Dungeon. Uh, Oh, it's the same song we've heard from Murata a million times now. Um, so if you like Murata Tear Out, you will enjoy this. If you don't, you will not. Can we just move on to some different style of sound, Murata, please? Uh, as we're moving into Timmy Trumpet and Sam Felt featuring Echo and Joe Taylor with The Sun Comes Up. This is just uninspired, boring, derivative commercial house. That's it. Then we got Laid Back Luke featuring Matthew Nolan, Left or Right. This is also just more of a kind of simplistic commercial slap house that really isn't all that interesting. Um, I talk about these bigger house artists here and there, and they're just kind of the same songs, and I don't really care for them. This is just another great example of that. Then we got Marshmallow and Samplifier with Mellow Fire uh, from the new It's Rhythm EP. Um, yeah, this is just another heavy Britom track that really isn't all that intriguing. Um, it's not audibly pleasing either and really have anything that makes me want to revisit it. Um, the whole EP at this point, I think, is not great, honestly. And this, I think, is actually one of the worst tracks from the EP. Um, yeah, I'm just I'm surprised Samplifier didn't bring uh, some more oomph to the track either. So we're moving into the meh category songs I thought were meh. Uh, we've got Draper with Perfect. Uh, Draper's been kind of trying to like mount this comeback of sorts as of late, and I just don't think he's kind of hitting the stride that he once did um, with that kind of more euphoric electropop sound of the past. I don't think he's quite captured that magic uh, yet, So, but I'm still very intrigued to hear more Draper. And we got Jay Hardway and Thomas Nahn with uh, Incompatible. Uh, yeah, future house here that just feels a little dated in my opinion. It's short, the lyrics are kind of whatever, and the vocals are kind of just okay. And in the end, it just feels like an older track from like 2017, maybe. So we got Nicky Romero and Maitland with The Night Train. Um, yeah, this is kind of a main stage track with big tonal movements and like kind of simple beat that's meant to be played at these big festivals. Um, really nothing more, nothing less going on on this track here, so... We've got Milk with Terra, 8-bit meets drum and bass for a new genre that I want to call right now 8-bit and bass. 8-bit and bass is what I'm calling this. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's a new sound for sure for me, and it's kind of a bit of an odd one. Um, the drops are kind of these like uh, like <laughs> uh, really forward, heavy, crushing dubstep sounds um, that have a bit of a, like, a weird emptiness to them. Uh, it's kind of like a... Yeah, I, I don't really know how to describe this track. It's a bit weird, and I'm, I don't really know how I feel about it. So that's why it's just meh. Then we got Rehab and Detorkas with uh, My Girl. Uh, happy Hardcore from this collab with a kind of Eurocentric flair to it. It's whatever. It's okay. Um, but nowhere near the best Happy Hardcore out there. You got Sullivan King with The Death of Peace of Mind. Um, yeah, this is your heavy Sullivan King metal step, but um, like a real intentional lack of this kind of all-out screaming and overblown tonal elements. Um, relative for Sullivan King, this is actually a bit more reserved and a careful track, and I think it's actually the start of something different. This feels like it's mixed and mastered way different than any other Sullivan King song, so I don't know if it's just someone else new is mixing and mastering this or what it is, but I, I kind of like this better in terms of mixed and mastering, but um, yeah, it's uh, okay. I guess for the most part. As we move into Nanobi with Barra Liga, yeah, this is a quirky, fast-paced Eurocore track that um, will probably resonate with listeners that um, are engrossed in that scene uh, and that, uh, I guess, uh, geographical area, as I am not. Um, but uh, yeah, for me, I thought it was just okay. Then we got Nostalgics with Look At Me, a bit of a hip house, kind of bass house groove with lots of kind of vinyl scratches all throughout. But um, yeah, the song is on the shorter side of things and doesn't really do a whole ton with the time that it gave. And so, yeah, I just think it's meh. 
Then we got Space Yeti and Mike Shift with Spaceship uh, from the new Traveler EP from Space Yeti out now. And uh, yeah, there's some nice sounding dubstep, uh, kind of more um, niche branching of kind of like into a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of color base, like a little bit of like just bro stuff here and there. And um, yeah, overall, it wasn't anything too exciting one way or another, but uh, I did enjoy it for what it was. So, uh, and I've got a puppy that wants to be a part of the video. So, uh, puppy, we'll uh, move along into Hollywood Principal and Connor will take me away. A stutter house in full effect here on this team up. Uh, it's a relatively simple house cut that's kind of kind of that commercial edge to it that it would kill at any summertime event. Um, not much more than that, though. But uh, yeah, still just a nice clean track. And then we've actually got Nelly Furtado featuring Tove Lo and S.G. Lewis with Love Bites. Um, as a dance pop track, it's pretty catchy and sounds better than the majority of the like radio hits that you're going to hear. But um, yeah, another one that's really not much more than that. Tove's features aren't overly interesting and S.G. Lewis's production didn't really blow me away as I would have expected. And so uh, I think it's on the upper echelon of, of meh this week. As we move into the good category songs that I thought were uh, pretty good, uh, we've got Nightmare and Ace Aura featuring Marley with Brand New Love from the new Unsound 2 EP from Nightmare, which is just chock full of collaborations. Um, I hear a lot of Ace Aura influence on this track in particular, which is a huge plus for me personally. Um, I think Ace brings uh, much of his signature pads and synth runs to enhance uh, what would have been, I think, a pretty okay Nightmare solo track. So... Then we got Jaws and Jantine with Nirvana, a more simplistic trap style track with good vocals and a nice melody to it. Um, nothing overly complex, kind of just a, a good sounding song, just a solid good track from Jaws here. We got Mr. Fiji Ouija with All My Love, another trip hop gem from the Fiji. Uh, love the vocal chops as always. I do wish it had a bit more uh, of an extended final movement and or just a longer track in general, but um, just a, another good trip hop, trip chill track from Fiji. Then we got Night Punk with Steps on You, Peep My Style. Uh, yeah, Grace Enough is with his first single of the year. Uh, Night Punk is back with another kind of trap breakbeat cut that brings in flavors of hip hop as well. Um, there's a lot of intentional sound design going on through here, whether it's like um, this like, yeah, vinyl stuff here or there, or this like weird cut in from this other random sample here and there. Like there's a, there's a lot going on, but he makes it all sound so pleasing considering how harsh some of those sounds are. Um, it just It just works. Then we got Skrillex, Hamdi, and Tachu with Push. Uh, the long-awaited Push track is finally out, and it's a bit of a doozy. A uh, heavily distorted synth melody with a repetitive vocal that is ripe to bring energy to any gathering. Um, I enjoyed it, but not as much as I think I would have expected uh, from the Skrillex track at, at this um, time of year of sorts. Uh, I actually don't think this one has a ton of staying power, I think, in the long term for Skrillex stuff. So. Then we got Mode Step and Soda with Another World. Um, nope, Mode Step has been kind of lurking in the shadows as of late, only to come back with a heater, uh, a blending of dub, DNB, and drum step at any given moment on this track. Uh, Mode Step embraces a dense, fully sounding bass line for the backbone of this track. Um, it's got a bit of an uh, underwhelming final drop, I would say, but I think the first uh, makes up for it uh, a lot. Then we got Snail's House with Technicolor from the new Pixelized 2 EP. Uh, this is just a nice, chippy, and bright Electro House track with um, little sprinkles of DNB um, sounding backbeats all throughout. And so, yeah, it's very joy filled, easy listening track. It's a good one. Then we've got Jason Ross and Kill the Noise featuring Sarah DeWarren with Under Pressure. A bit of a throwback to an earlier, simpler time for melodic music with those kind of big sweeping sustains and um, halftime percussion beats. Uh, it's a nice cut and one that I think I'm going to revisit a whole ton and um, I'm actually surprised. I, I was okay on a lot of the Jason Ross stuff as of late, but uh, this one I really did enjoy. And I also love Kill the Noise as well, so... Then we got Cosmos Midnight featuring Spill Tab with Eating Heartache from the new Stop Thinking Start Feeling LP. I wouldn't really consider this really like typical EDM, uh, but they they do come from an EDM background, and as their sound is kind of transformed into this primarily electro pop and funk soundscape. But um, yeah, I mean, I couldn't not talk about these guys, especially with a new album coming out. It's just yeah, this track in particular is very smooth. The vocals are quite divine, and the instrumentation just matches those vocals beautifully. So. That's that. Uh, then we've got Lose the Child and Maddie on with Believe It. This could easily be the electropop song of the summer. Uh, light steel drums and Maddie on's falsetto vocals are an unconventional pair, but it works quite well. Uh, it's fun, it's an earworm, and it's an easy listen for sure. Then we've got Nigel Good with One Plus Space from the new A Little Something LP. 
My goodness, this album is fantastic. Go listen to this, please. Uh, it is just a masterclass of melodic house and ambient production. Um, this record is a must-listen for any house enjoyer. Uh, that being said, this wasn't my favorite track from the LP. This was the kind of single release of the LP, but it wasn't my favorite. Uh, but it is a brilliant showcase of Nigel Good's quality and atmospheric sound design. So um, go listen to this, please, please, please. Then we got Kaiza with Strangers from the Dancing and Crying Volume 1 EP. Also, what is this cover art? What is going on here? I don't get it. But apart from that, this is a beautiful uh, dance track that's like part nostalgic, part euphoric, and all around really high quality. Um, Kaiza has been rocking it with this uh, new EP of the singles that have come up to this point. Now this whole EP is out. And um, yeah, it, it's just as good as what I expected it to be. Um, just not the album art. <laughs> And then we got If Found Rave 2 here with you. Um, this is a big rave track with some distinctly playful synth runs, um, kind of just rushing in and out here and there. Lots of energy, big sound, great track. Really enjoyed this one. You got Feed Me with Giant Creatures. Uh, I mean, Feed Me has been on a tear as of late, uh, and he's on it again. Um, another really great track here. Um, I, I don't know how it's possible, but uh, Feed Me has been coming out with song after song after song after song um, for the past so long uh, number of weeks, and he's not sacrificing any quality uh, with the quantity he's putting out. Um, this is just another bouncy, high-octane, big-sounding track from Feed Me that just hits hard. Then we got Darby and Britt Laurie with Trust. Uh, Darby is putting on a clinic with this kind of new wave-esque kind of bouncy, melodic style. It's very, very unique to uh, Darby, and I think it's a very, um, yeah, personal style to him, the one that I don't hear a ton, and um, very reminiscent of also Take Two that he did uh, back there with Slippy on Monster Cat. And uh, yeah, it plays around with a ton of different elements, jumping around from one to another, and in the end, it just sounds great. Sounds very pleasing, so... Uh, and then we got James Blake with Thrown Around, uh, a bit of an atypical breakbeat kind of garage track that uh, I think <laughs> normal person would listen to as an EDM fan. Um, it's got a very prominent keyboard lead to it as well. James' vocals are in top form here. And uh, yeah, this is, this is definitely a more interesting listen, but this is one you definitely need to go give uh, a shot at for sure. Love James Blake. And finally, my number one track of the week is in standout, one track in standout this week, and it is indeed Skybreak and Keepsake with Comet. Um, this is a throwback to kind of 2015's-esque um, future bass and um, yeah, indie dance and, and drum step and all the kind of sound from, from Skybreak here, and uh, this it's just great. Uh, it kind of hits my nostalgia bone as well as being this kind of more modern brilliant track from Skybreak that I've just been loving recently. So it's bright, it's colorful, Keepsake's vocals are pure, and the structure of the song is unlike 99% of the stuff out there right now and, and feels like a bit of a, yeah, like a throwback, like I said. So I freaking love the song. If you want to see my reaction to that, um, I have it somewhere on the channel. Maybe I'll remember to put it up here at this point, but um, yeah, go check that out for sure. But um, yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think of any and all songs in the comment section below. But other than that, I'm Dakota from Bowtie Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.